Mic check, 212, bitch. What's up, guys? It's DDP, back with another Big 12 football roundup. This is going to be a condensed version as well. I want to get back to doing these live, but until I have just a little more time, a little more availability to my schedule, I can't do that. I have to settle for doing these where I can piece it together and edit it as I need to. So let's jump right into Norman, Oklahoma here. We have the Oklahoma Sooners against the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Now, Oklahoma State came into the game with a 5-4 and four record, but it's bedlam, so you can't take anything for granted. Least of all defense, because holy crap was this game ugly. Oklahoma wanted to lose this game at times. So aside from the fact that they let Taylor Cornelius look like a freaking... Heisman candidate throwing for 500 yards on him, 300 in the first half. Let's see, he goes 34 of 53 for 501, three touchdowns, no picks. Are you serious? Come on, son. Like, I know that Oklahoma State beat Texas a couple weeks ago, but come on, man. You've got to be better than that. The Oklahoma secondary was wretched in this game. Uh, specifically, Hubbard. On the ground, 22 carries, 104 yards, three touchdowns. Ooh. And then through the air, they had it going as well. Just check out this. Wallace, 10 catches for 220 yards and two touchdowns. How are you going to win that game? I'll, I'll, it gets worse. It gets worse. Johnson, 11 catches for 128 yards and a touchdown. Oklahoma secondary was trash. They had another guy, Stoner, 5 for 70. Hubbard, the running back, 5 for 49. Like, they gashed Oklahoma secondary. The Oklahoma defense up front, I actually thought, did a pretty good job for the most part. But that secondary was just ugly, ugly for Oklahoma. To me, there are a couple big moments in this game. We saw, obviously, everyone's going to point to the missed PAT by Oklahoma State. And, you know, hey fair point their kicker misses a PAT that would have put him ahead instead it ends up being a tie game there was another moment in this game where Oklahoma's play calling late in the first half they have five seconds left and they're at about the Oklahoma State 40 so they're not in field goal range I understand that no problem there but Kyler Murray rolls out scrambles for like the entirety of the five seconds and then slides and even though they had a timeout I'm thinking Kyler what are you doing that needs to be like a quick throw to the sideline to either get you in field goal range or that needs to be just cannon arm down to the end zone and just what happens happens. But the way he went about it I thought was kind of mind boggling because what, what did you think, even if you slide with one second, which he did, by the time the ref grants the timeout, the time has run out. So confusing play for Oklahoma there. They left some points on the board I feel or at least potentially left points on the board. Oklahoma State misses the extra point uh, that could have tied it. And we just find ourselves in a weird, weird game. Oklahoma at one point actually got a little separation. They go up, I want to say it was 34-21, something to that effect. They get a two-score cushion, and Oklahoma State just roars back. In the first half, most everything worked for Oklahoma. Second half, not so much. It became much more of a grind. But they got the one turnover of the day, for the defense and that allowed them to go down and take the lead they go up 48 47 oklahoma state three minutes and change march right down the field get an easy touchdown and because they don't have faith in their kicker they go for two they are going for the win basically in oklahoma with like a minute left in norman and it does not work out for them and no credit to the oklahoma defense here cornelius throws a horrendous pass three yards behind his wide open receiver I mean I can't even feel good about this one if I'm Oklahoma not only for your defense getting torched but just for you didn't even deserve to win it I mean bad execution offensively in the second half defense horrible horrible defense and then the Oklahoma State just chokes away what should have been an easy pitch and catch to win the game effectively. So very frustrating there uh, for OU side offensively. Kyler Murray, 21 of 29 for 349 and a touchdown. 
He was sacked three times. Oklahoma State came into this game the leading team in the Big 12 as far as sacks. They got to him a couple times for sure. But interesting to me that they held him so well in check on uh, out of the end zone, both running and throwing the ball. On the ground, Kennedy Brooks goes 15 for 165. That's an 11-yard average. Three touchdowns as well. Trey Sermon, 16 for 124. He looks to be back. Uh, two touchdowns there. So you got 31 carries there. OU ran the ball and enforced their will. So I guess that's part of why Kyler wasn't as impactful through the air. Still threw for 350 effectively, but still not as many touchdown passes. Uh, Kyler adds another 14 carries for 66 yards, still a 4.7 average. And receiving, OU had Marquise Brown, 8 for 142 and a touchdown. He was the one time OU got the big play over the top. Uh, CeeDee Lamb, another kind of frustrating game, but a gorgeous sideline catch he had. Reviewed it, absolutely caught it. Fantastic. He's had two or three times this year where that sideline uber highlight play has kind of eluded him. And one of those times I felt like it should have been reviewed or challenged because I thought he would have had it in like the second week of the season. Uh, that would have been the UCLA game, I believe. But he gets he gets this one. He goes three for 52 as well. Nothing else really noteworthy within the receiving game for Oklahoma. Just to me, this game this game was just a amalgamation of everything that's wrong uh, with OU defensively. Their secondary is so bad, I don't know what they're going to be able to do to really uh, make any kind of push. But hey, 9-1, and one, let's see what they can do in the future. Pivoting now to Lubbock, we take a look at the Texas Tech Red Raiders hosting the Texas Longhorns. This game here, it showed one that Tech is very good. Texas has been struggling. They have three losses to this point, but Tech gave them everything they wanted. Texas does escape with a 41-34 win, and in that game... You get solid performances out of Sam Ellinger again. Ellinger goes 22 of 34 for 312 and four TDs. No picks. I think he only has two interceptions on the year, which is crazy. Uh, Ingram on the ground, 14 carries, 83 yards, and a touchdown. Watson, 18 for 58. Not near as good. 3.2 average. Uh, Ellinger, man, 15 carries for 14 yards. 0.9 average. That's rough. But... Texas gets what they need out of the receiving game to balance it out. Eight for 159 and two touchdowns for Humphrey. Another for du Duvernay. Duvernay, sorry. Uh, another four for 66 and two touchdowns. So they get what they need there. And they're able to hold off Duffy having to make the start. No Bowman this week. He was knocked out of last week's game against Oklahoma again. with I think it's another collapse long, which is like twice this year. So they probably got to just shut him down at this point. But Duffy and his... Relief effort goes 37 of 47 for 444 yards, four touchdowns and one pick. That's pretty impressive, but he's not. Like, the numbers look good, but Bowman is certainly the better quarterback if they had him. Still credit to Duffy to keep them in this game, you know, a one-score game at home against a team that I feel is, even though they're rated 19th in this game, Texas, I do feel that Texas is comfortably the better team. Uh... Duffy also added 17 for 80 car or 80 carries, 17 carries for 80 yards on the ground with a long 29. Not a lot else worked on the rushing game for Texas Tech. Ward had 10 for 41. Receiving you got out of Wesley 8 for 171 and two touchdowns, and Vasher goes 8 for 87 and two touchdowns. So that was the real advantage for them there. Good game, good effort out of Tech, but just not enough to. Not enough to beat Texas. Texas still has a path, potentially, to the Big 12 championship game. It's looking like it's going to be Oklahoma versus West Virginia. I think maybe there is a scenario in which Texas can sneak in. Uh, I think they need either West Virginia to lose both. No. They need West Virginia to lose to Oklahoma and trip up before then, or OU to trip up and then also lose to West Virginia. Something to that effect. So one of those teams has to lose twice, and they're going to play each other once. So that's that's there. So it's still a real possibility, I believe, for Texas. Elsewhere, Iowa State at home beats Baylor 28-14. In this game, we have Brewer, the Baylor quarterback, going 26 of 36 for 288 and two touchdowns. Uh, another guy, McClendon, going 3 for 12 for 71. Interesting there. Must have been a relief effort. Uh, Brewer, receiver, or sorry, running back goes 12 for 72. Uh, Hurd, 
The receiver goes 5 for 81 as well. Strickland gets 5 catches for 67 yards and a touchdown. And Mims gets 5 receptions for 43 yards and a touchdown as well. Page loaded on me there. Baylor, Baylor is looking like maybe they're headed in the right direction, but they're not there yet. And it's going to take some time to balance out after everything, obviously. Uh, for Iowa State, meanwhile, Purdy goes 18 of 23 for 230 and a touchdown. Pretty pretty standard stuff that, there that you would ask of him. Efficient, nothing gaudy number-wise. Uh, on the ground, he also gives you 12 for 56 and a touchdown. Meanwhile, Montgomery held largely in check in this game, surprisingly. He goes 11 for 53. Uh, 4.8 average, but no touchdowns. I'm surprised he didn't get featured more. He also had three catches for 25 yards. On the ground, you also got four rushes for 18 yards and a touchdown out of Lang, so that helps them out a little bit. Through the air, leading the way was Eaton, three catches for 61 yards. Uh, Jones had four for 39 and a touchdown. Surprisingly low number out of Hakeem Butler. He goes just three for 25 in this game. So not much else to say in this game, so we'll just move on. Kansas State edges out. Kansas 21-17 in the Little Apple. And this game, another one that I did not care for. <laughs> I was not going to be interested in this game. Neither team is very good this year. For Kansas, Bender goes 21 of 34 for 232 and two touchdowns. On the ground, Williams goes 14 for 59. Also, Herbert, 10 for 53. Through the air, Kansas' one receiving threat, Sims, goes 5 for 113 and a touchdown. I know Booker also got 4 for 35 and a touchdown, but nothing electric there. For Kansas State, you had Delton going 11 of 17 for a buck 26. Uh, no, no passing touchdowns for K-State. On the ground, they got 22 for 117 and two touchdowns out of Barnes, and Delton added another 16 carries for 55 yards and a touchdown. So there's something there for them. Nothing noteworthy in the receiving game. Just a low scoring, not very entertaining game against two not very good teams. Although Kansas is better this year than they have been in recent years. And the one that I'm sure Adam Proctor is most excited about. The TCU Horn Frogs go to West Virginia, go to Morgantown and get skull dragged, as RJ Young would put it. Losing 47 to 10 is TCU in this case. Nothing happened for the Horn Frogs. Collins goes 22 of 37, 229 and a touchdown. Anderson on the ground, 11 for 19. Collins, 11 for negative 9. Rieger is the only guy that gave him anything in the receiving game. 11 catches, 150 yards, and a touchdown. Nothing else noteworthy for TCU in this game. Greer, meanwhile, another solid performance. 25 of 39 for 343 and three TDs. One pick as well, but still three TDs. Petaway on the, on the ground goes 12 for 59 with a touchdown. You also had Wesco going 5 for 86 and a touchdown through the air. And Sills 6 for 71 and a touchdown. Jennings also 5 for 58 and a touchdown. So West Virginia, a much better performance. Uh, they seem like they are over their stumble a couple weeks ago, or I guess three weeks ago, whenever they had their loss. And now it's really going to be interesting to see if they can keep their momentum going and we get this awesome collision course now between Oklahoma and West Virginia. Texas beat Oklahoma, West Virginia beat Texas. So it's setting up for an interesting, uh, it's not a rubber match here in this case, but it's still an interesting matchup nevertheless because I want to see if Oklahoma can be legit. West Virginia has an offense that will abuse you if you aren't careful in Oklahoma's defense. Feels like it's falling apart at the worst time of year while their offense is still very good, but I would also argue the offense hasn't been dominating in the same way that it was earlier in the season. So a lot of interesting stuff. If anything, if I had to go with my gut right now, I would favor West Virginia. I'm sure Adam loves hearing that, but we'll see. We'll see for sure. Looking forward to next week's game. Uh, next week, some of the matchups are nah, Kansas at Oklahoma. That's not surprising. TCU at Baylor, Tech at K-State. We got West Virginia at Oklahoma State. Don't sleep on Oklahoma State. Their offense is very good as well. Uh, defense, again, that defensive line will get after the quarterback as well, so keep an eye on that. And Iowa State at Texas, so that's going to be a big game for Texas as well. Uh, Iowa State is nothing to sleep on. It's just a good thing for Texas. It's in Austin. But that's all my time for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will be back hopefully next Sunday to do another one of these. If not, it'll be Monday. 
But until next time, that's all my time. Did I already say that? I feel like I already said that. I'll edit that out if I remember to. Uh, until next time, guys, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.